got Member Taipari and then Councillor Fletcher and Councillor Casey. Uh, kia ora, Madam Chair. I'm quite keen to support these, um, but I just need to sort of get a clarification on recommendation three. Uh, when we say with adjoining owners, is that is that, that list of, or that, well, I'm looking at page 69, and there's all those residential properties there. Are they the adjoining owners that you'll be including? So, so just to be clear, the question, the, so 69 is a... So it shows a aerial photograph of the quarry, and on the right-hand side is a whole range of residential properties. So when I go to recommendation three on no, page... It's not on the, it's not on the page. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think from so from the resolution in November that might be the, the so if you just on page sixty two, if you go down to the, the version <coughs> of the, the November resolution of this committee, <coughs> there was some specific instructions to consult with Antipathy and Probit in Housing New Zealand. Yes. And they are two of the adjoining owners. They are the specific adjoining owners. So oh, it's not the residential properties? They would be conssulted with through the well. There's residential housing New Zealand properties. But so you're talking about the multi. That'd be more the public consultation. That would process. be the public consultation. Yes. Okay. So, Madam Chair. Um, oh, and the Mungar Authority, of course. Yeah. So, Madam Chair, what I'm what I'd like to understand if there's an opportunity to be able to uh, separate on recommendation <coughs> A, Roman numeral three, uh, where it's there's adjoining owners. Full stop. In my view. And that in, and iwi interest actually moves up to a Roman numeral one, because I'm, what I'm proposing is that the iwi interest have had that same reportage before the public consultation process. So, would that? I'm a question to see you guys. Is, is that uh, you see any problems with that being proposed? Um, no, uh, no. Look, I, I th look. It's it's. It's easy being specific about the ball because they have a meeting and we know the date of it. So I think, mean, and providing we can get that the the, the engagement, I think that we're, we're yeah. No, I think I'm we're, we're comfortable that that can work. Okay, Madam Chair. Well, I'm just sort of suggesting to you that I'd like to make an amendment on that oh, basis. So uh, it's just basically after adjoining landowners. So yeah. So Roman numeral three, in my view, would read was full stop after adjoining owners, mm -hmm. and the and iwi interest could be added up to. The council officers report to the Pukita yeah, Papa right. local board and iwi interest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how this could ex proposed exchange aligns with the Three Kings plan and iwi interest. And iwi interest. Thank you. Okay. Good suggestion. Thank you for that. Councillor Fletcher. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. In, in a way, um, Member Taipare has touched on one of the questions that I had. But, Clive, while I really um, accept that what you're trying to do is to make, to ensure a better quality development, if I take that, um, with the, uh, and I note that you were present, with the presentation from the local board, it strikes me that there's, there's no real um, friction with what you're both proposing. Is, is there anything um, that we could change in here um, that would be a difficulty for you if we were to take on, other, other than five, Roman five, uh, which has been traversed, um, it wouldn't strike me as being impossible to find a situation where everyone is comfortable uh, in moving forward. And I certainly think the consultation is going to throw up a lot of really valuable information. So, um, Clive, could you just outline how we can um, meet the needs of the local board and, and still make progress and, and make for a better quality development here? I mean, I think what what we we've set out here is, I suppose, a process. I mean, under over and above the process, there are um, some probably quite diverse views on what the right outcome should be. So, I mean, I think at one, if I could, I suppose, to polarise it, on one hand, there's the views that seek to continue quarry filling for another 10 to 15 years and have less residential development, and there's views that are around. Um, maybe working with the current permitted fill levels and having more intense housing that could happen more quickly. And and I think <coughs> some of the some of the submissions I hear around the local board are maybe lean towards one end as opposed to another. And I guess that's it's really that the, the decision point ultimately comes through is to what degree to the degree to which um, the land exchange then allows the plan change process to go through and work out the right form of development. 
and 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 I guess the starting point and and bearing in mind that if there is no land exchange, there will be a form of development anyway. So it's I, I so, so I it's, understand so that. It's so I, th I think we're, we're in agreement on that, but it's just how we get to to that point where that judgment oh, is made, and the it's importance the of actually working with the local board as we get to that point in terms of judgment. So what I'm wondering is, you, you heard Harry's submission to us today, how that can be woven into these recommendations in such a way that it's not going to pre prevent um, the, the work that needs to be undertaken, but b that we are working um, yeah. in, in, a, in a, a good partnership with our local board and with iwi, um, as um, Member Taipuri has already kind of uh, alluded to, we've got the Munger Authority, we've got a whole range of interests here. Um, it would really be a good outcome, to my mind, that we're, we're not going to please everybody, but where it is possible we can find a consensus. So, Councillor Fletcher, we had just in consultation with um, Councillor Darby, um, we, we realised that this was going to be a bit sticky, so we're recommending that, um, and number six is up on the screen, that we look at a bit of a process during this this month that we've got, during April, to see if we can, and we won't address all of the pukitapapa of local boards' issues, but that we try and deal with some of those key issues as you are suggesting to see if we can resolve as much of it as possible. <coughs> so we've added in a, a number six that's up there. Can I just reflect on that and just leave it at questions at this point? Yep, absolutely. Councillor Casey. Um, I have an amendment. You do, and um, why don't we deal with questions first? I don't have any. Okay. Or we'll just take questions from the councillors, then we'll deal with your amendment. Councillor Clive. Um, Clive, I'm, one thing I'm struggling with is, is trying to understand is there a road going to be connecting up to the shopping centre or not? It says plaza and it's got a, it's got some um, lines there, but it's, and that was on the first sheet and the third C shows that as well as, is that a road that's going to go up the cliff face? It's Fletcher's, who's putting a road in, if there is a road, who's putting it in? The, um so there is like the, there's the road by the plaza that does get slightly reconfigured. Um, the roads would be built by Fletchers. I mean, the principle that, that we've set out from the beginning is that any any land exchange. I mean, the Reserves Act requires the value of the exchange to be measured and approved by dockers being of equivalent value in terms of quality of land and quality of the reserve land. And we've said to Fletchers that it can be of no cost to the council. So any any roads will be built by Fletcher's invested in council. So, so yep, thank you. But there is a road proposed to go in that would go up the cliff face or along the cliff face to connect up. Just at the bottom there, it's got, on the big map, it's got plaza right at the bottom there, and it shows a formed road. I just want to know, is there a road? Because that was a major consideration for the yeah, local the board was within, connecting. Within, within the report, this plan, if you've got that, is that the plan you're looking at? Well, you can see it on the oh, big Yeah, you've got that plan. The, 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 the A3 plan there yep. is the best one to look at. Yeah. And so there is a so there is the Graham Bree Drive that runs across there. The road round the sports fields is lower down in the on the quarry floor. Okay. So so right. So there is no road. Sorry, I'm just going through these maps. It looks to me as though there is a a road where where it says plaza. Where is that? Is that up top? That's up top. That's by the shopping centre. That's so that's near the Fickling centre. That's the it's like a shared space. So other than a staircase, that is the access. The only access up from the bottom to the top is the staircase. Is that right? At, at that point, yes. And then there's the road that goes down by the Western Playing Field, um, and the, and then wraps round and comes down at the roundabout. I mean, in a sense, this. I mean, this. This was the level of detail that we were going to deal with when we came which we're going to set out more fully for the local board and then bring back to you in, 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 in an evaluation report in, in May. So this wasn't in, today's report wasn't really trying to get you across all of the detail. But, but, um, 
But, but that's, but, but yeah, but we can, if it's useful, to, we can sit down, I can highlight that. It's hard and it's not on the screen, isn't it? Right. Okay, I'll, I'm taking your assurance. <laughs> right, I've got Councillor Walker. Sure, just, so a, just, just a quick... Just on questions um, at the moment, and then sure, we'll move to the recommendation after this. It's only a question, um, and it's, it's really just around the timeline, and in particular, I'm looking at four, where it says report to the Auckland Development Committee in June. Given that we're going to be going out in consultation, that's in April, then I'm assuming there's a report back to the Pukitapapa local board. They're going to be involved in the consultation process. <laughs> Would it not be more appropriate to have the report back to the Auckland Development Committee in June rather than May? May. Because it's it's going to be really Sorry, tight. Councillor Walker, we, we can't hear you. You're actually okay. talking through okay. the chair so, for a good reason. So, so I'm we can just hear what you're saying. I'm just stating that my understanding is that uh, we've got public consultation in April. Yep. I'm assuming that that goes for maybe a month. Uh, then there's the involvement of the Pukitapapa local board. Obviously, they're going to be considering this. They're a they're a big stakeholder. They'll need to think through what the implications are. Then there's the report back to this committee, and I would have thought that June would have been a better date than May. That would give officers more time. <coughs> um, maybe there'd be some cost efficiencies there as well. Oh, this is the staff recommendation. Everyone's pretty comfortable with, with May. Well, I mean, yeah, and, and perhaps we could use the, the, the group in six just to, to test that, and, and if, if your judgment was that was more that we needed for whatever reason for more time we could we could, we could make that decision yeah later in april let's come back and, mm. and consider we we'll be sitting point. alongside the board so we can we can work so there's some latitude then. there yeah. okay happy with okay, that okay so we'll just signal we've may got or june councillor casey's amendment that we have we're, we're fine i mean we've there is let's just be a bit flexible and a bit um no. <laughs> sensible here um, so, Time's Casey, time. by way of a me by substitution, any exchange of land, bit of food until after the plan changes have been decided. Right, can Megan, can you just give us some advice on that? Well, um, through the chair, obviously, it, um, that ne obviously negates entirely the the recommendations um, put in front of you. Um, I, I'm not sure. Maybe Councillor Casey could confirm. Are you talking about the consideration of the exchange of land or the or the actual? Uh, physical exchanging because we're not proposing any physical exchanging at all at this stage. So through through the chair, um, my advice in terms of timing <clears throat> is that uh, it's not necessary to um, to delay the consideration of the exchange um, for the plan change processes. Um, I believe we we can do them um, in parallel uh, and still potentially get a good outcome. But it's up to you, Madam Chair, and the, and the committee. Is there a seconder for Councillor Casey's <coughs> motion? Madam Chair, may I just uh, request an explanation in order that I might understand what, what um, of, of Councillor Casey, through you? Can I speak to it? Thank you. Um, Fletcher signalled their intention to um, put two private plan changes into the unitary plan process some time ago, that was last March. <laughs> they had an open day, and in their private plan change material, they had a land spot with Auckland Council, signalled, it was already up there. And I, I think you remember that I wasn't terribly happy about that. This is, this is basically, what's the word? We're now kind of legitimising that, that's what I think. So Fletcher signalled it as much as a year ago, and now here it is before us. And you have to say, and I will say why, and I'd like to talk about the local community and the local board, because I've been a member of Winstone's Quarry CLG for the last 10 years. Fletcher is not a good neighbour. It never has. And I don't care if the mayor's here or not to do his rara. Fletcher has not been a good neighbour in Pukitapapa. And the board and the local community have every right to be suspicious of what's going on right now. And what is going on right now, well, I'd like you to take the perspective of the community. Just take your hat off as a councillor. 
We've got Fletcher development with two private plan changes. One is using their own land, and one is a land swap using council land. Now, that's, these two things are meandering along. There is two things, or there's not two things, there's several things wrong with both of these private plan changes that the community is furious around. One is, both of them recommend a fill to the, in the quarry to 15 metres below Mount Eden Road, which limits any kind of development. It does, it limits the outcomes. And I think Julie said, and I hope you've all read these two pages from the board, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to have the best development for the people of Pukitapapa. And they won't take what Fletcher wants as the third or fourth rung down. They won't have that. They want premier civic space, no mention at all today, no mention in the Fletcher plan, nothing at all. They want better access to the manga, nothing. Nothing I've heard today. Nothing in the Fletcher plan gives that. The Three Kings precinct plan was about six years in the making. Umpteen public meetings with the community where they all said these are the things we want. The Three Kings precinct plan should now take priority over everything else. And if that's the case, all I have to say is, what is the rush? We're now at stage two of the Three Kings precinct plan, which goes back to the community. <coughs> Uh, George, you're interrupting me, and that's not fair because I'm going to lose my train of thought. And I do uh, want to get this out. You've been doing it all day. I do, want to, I do want to get this out. Hang on, let's just have a. Have a We've got the local case, board in the paper this morning saying there's nothing in the LTP plan for, for Puki Tapapa. <coughs> Throughout this process, the board has been constantly stomped on by us. Mm -hmm. And I listen to all your boards as they come in, and wherever possible, I take their part and I listen to them. What you've got today is a compromise from them, but they actually, they actually, the community does not want a land swap now. And uh, you have to say, well, why would you do it now? The perception is, and I said this at the workshop, and I'll say it again, that council's in bed with Fletcher's, doing the deal to get the plan changed through. Why, what, 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 why else are we doing this? Clive said this is a live thing, there's all these other partners we haven't consulted with. Well, take your time, Clive. Take the rest of the year. The plan changes will take another year to get through. There's no rush here. I don't know why you're here today demanding this of us and having this, you know, May, June, April, May, June. Why? Why? What is the rush? You tell me. That's a question. Madam Chair. What's the rush? I'm just going to... <laughs> Sorry, it's rhetorical. We're just... No. We're, 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 that is badgering, actually. Well, I'm going to ask Megan to just give an explanation of why we are processing this. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a reminder, I mean, as a regulatory authority, so with my regulatory authority hat on, uh, we have a duty to process an application that comes before us, and, and that is what we're doing with the, with the plan changes. Right. Matters of things like um, access to maunga, the, the public spaces, some of the things that have been talked about, um, is really what the, the plan change discussion is about. The matter before you today is in relation only to the proposed, uh, to a proposed land exchange. It does... Um, uh, relate to the plan change, um, but uh, this is just the matter of, of the land exchange, and we as officers believe it is prudent to consider that matter now, uh, not in, a, in terms of a rush, but just in terms of um, prudent use of time and resources um, and efficiency. And I'll finish just by saying another couple of sentences, and that is the public perception of all of this. You, I mean, you can hear that and you can accept it. But what the, per the public perceive to be happening here is that the cart is very much being put before the horse. Let's get through the plan changes. Let's see what the deal is at the end of that. Don't limit the choices because that's what's going to happen here. Once this deal is done and stitched up, it's, 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 it's a done deal. And that's not good enough for Puki Tapapa, who've waited years for this development, who want it, who want to see the best that can be in the quarry. This ain't it. As long as it's 15 metres below Mount Eden Road, this ain't it. And that's what's in the plan changes. And this land swap is part of that plan change. 